Eau Rouge Radion section. Well, Eau Rouge is in a good Formula One car, flat out. And by flat out, I mean, again, something approaching 180 miles an hour. And the reason I don't like it is it's a corner that, to me, is a corner that's determined by technology, not by driver skill. And also, bravery is a big part of it as well. Now, obviously, being a racing driver, you have to, you have to be brave. But for me, being a racing driver also should be about skill. Eau Rouge is now so easy in one sense for a good car to take flat out that the challenge of it is not any longer there. But what is a problem is that if anything ever happened in that corner, particularly as you climb up out of the Eau Rouge or coming through Radio, you are going to have an almighty accident. And also, at the top of the top of Eau Rouge at the Radio, it is totally, totally blind. So if somebody does go off there, any cars following, are, they don't know what's going to be there. They'll certainly see dust, they may see bits of cars, but they will not know where that car is. And uh, I don't know whether the, the organizers here at Spa really feel that that is something that they would like to change, but that is a personal opinion of mine. May not be supported by all the drivers here this weekend. Well, I've driven through it, and that's my opinion. Of course, uh, the Rouge section, a part of the old Spa Francorchamps circuit, where, I mean, the old circuit, which was on the top of my head about eight miles long, John, where people like Fonjo, Farina, Ascari won races in the 50s, where Jim Clark won four consecutive Belgian Grand Prix in the 60s. And Jim Clark never professed to like this place. In fact, he openly said he disliked Spa Francorchamps, yet he won four times. Of course, Hatton Center over the last four years has been the victory here as well. I don't know if Senna professes to liking it or disliking it. I think Senna is such a professional racing driver, he just views it as another racetrack. He is probably quite unemotional about the actual circuit in its layout. Twenty-five Grand Prix being held here at Spa, John. Fourteen times, or eleven times, it was won by the world champion of that year, and fourteen times by someone else. And uh, then Gurney one here in 1967 but we're looking at the man who is driving his second Grand Prix for the Fun Metal team Eric van der Poel who qualified in 18th place in Hungary and then that was his best qualifying performance ever but the race lasted only two laps when he ran over some debris of teammate Gabriele Tarquini he damaged the underside of his car as I understand it and went off from the second lap on that very first corner in Hungary van der Poel this morning being slower than his teammate, but in 22nd position with a full metal forward on one 59.2, and already he's improved on that because he's done a 156, and he's one of those, sorry, 158.2, he's one of those Ford HB users. Well, we saw last year how effective the Ford HB is, both with Benetton and with the Jordan. Roberto Moreno had the fastest race lap, but this was the race that that young German star, Michael Schumacher, made his debut. And what a glorious weekend it was for Schumacher, up until the race, that is, and also for the, the Jordan team with the 7-Up sponsorship, as it was at that time. Of course, the race didn't last a lap in car failure, but Michael Schumacher was so unbelievable throughout that weekend, one year ago to this weekend, that it did not take very long before, well, let's say, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that the Jordan team discovered in Spa turned out to be...